Moments ago, Governor Tim Walz was pressed by Good Morning America about why Kamala Harris hasn't made good on her campaign promises while she's been in the White House. Here is that exchange. Something that um, former President Trump said, something that you, within your debate uh, with, they were saying that, hey, these are policies that Kamala Harris could have done three years ago when she was in the White House with President Biden, uh, and she never did. What do you say to people who, who bring that up? Who say well, that? well, Donald Trump had four years to do it, if you're going to talk about that. And what the, the point is, you need a partner in Congress. You've seen these. We've seen different bills that are ready to pass. And Donald Trump makes sure he steps in. Um, we saw it around immigration, uh, a bipartisan bill, widely respected, wanting to make a difference in this, holding true to our values, securing the border. Donald Trump steps in and says, look, that's going to hurt my political future. Let's not make it happen. Oh, my gosh. Will they stop with that? Donald Trump's son, Eric, who is EVP of the Trump Organization, joins us now to react. Good morning to you, Eric. Hey, Ainsley. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. What, should, what did you make of that? Because everyone has been saying she had three and a half years to do this. Even your dad on the debate stage said that to her. And now they're flipping it and saying, well, he had four years. Well, Ainsley, you can't answer a question if there's no answer to the question, right? Which is why he was trying to, you know, slide his way through that. I mean, at the end of the day, they let 20 million illegal immigrants into the country. And then you get to hear Kamala come out and talk about how she wants to fix the border. But she doesn't want to fix the border. And here's how you know why. My father built about 600 miles of wall. He also built the rest of the steel slats that all they needed to do is literally, you know, put up end. And she sold all of them for scrap metal. Then she goes out and they fly 320,000 illegal immigrants into the country in the middle of the night. You guys covered it better than anybody. Mm -hmm. They were landing in airports all across the country. They're not serious about solving this problem. I mean, Ainsley, when was the last time you heard them talk about fentanyl? I mean, fentanyl has killed 300,000 children this year. 300,000. You have police departments in this country that are running out of Narcan. That's how much fentanyl, that's how big the problem has become. You don't hear them talking about it. Ainsley, they want illegal immigrants. She was the border czar. My wife was just down on the border. The border patrol agents were literally telling her that they wouldn't allow them to turn on the security cameras that my father built, right, on big poles right behind the wall. They, they wouldn't allow them to turn on the security cameras because they didn't want to show the American people the magnitude of the problem that they have on the southern border. And it's killing our country. It's killing our, our jobs. You see what's happening in Aurora, Colorado, where you have... Venezuelan gang members mm -hmm. taking over people's low-income housing. I mean, you, you see it with the drug pandemic in this country. You see it with the human trafficking. You see it with jobs. I mean, they're, you know, taking, taking every job. I mean, you're seeing real systematic problems. Right now in New York City, you have 157 hotels that are filled to the brim with illegal immigrants. These mm -hmm. are the most expensive hotels anywhere on, on Earth. Yeah. And yet... You know, we, we have veterans sleeping on streets. We're, we're not doing anything to take care of them. They're not a serious administration. And, and the reason you have him do this rope-a-dope, Ainsley, is he can't answer the questions because yeah. their policies have been a disaster and they want these disastrous policies. You know, Eric, we're politics, you know this better than anyone. It's kind of what's going on in the times as to how we vote. And right now, we, have, we saw what happened in Israel, broke everyone's hearts. We saw what happened in Afghanistan. We can't pay our groceries. We see all these illegal immigrants coming across our border. Crime is up. Uh, it go, the list goes on and on. So when I see Kamala Harris drinking a beer, right when uh, a hurricane is hitting the people we love in North Carolina and ripping down their houses and people are dying, or when I see Tim Walls at a stadium talking about football, it's just not the right time for that. We're all anxious. We're all counting down until this election. Everyone's nervous. People are scared they're going to lose our country. And they're having beers and talking about football and going pheasant hunting. It's just not the time. And this was the headline in Politico, that Walls has to launch media blitz to woo male voters. There's a deficit a young, among young men voting for Kamala Harris and for Walls. So he's trying to focus on football and hunting, doing this interview with Michael Strahan in the middle of the University of Minnesota football stadium, taking social influencers, hunting, pheasant hunting, and taking local reporters hunting or talking about hunting. What is your reaction to that? Yeah, my reaction is, of course, Ainsley, she, she did a podcast called Call Her Daddy as, as a major hurricane was destroying mm -hmm. our country. I mean, listen, I'm all for humor. You know me very well as a person, right? I'm a funny guy, but like wrong time, wrong place. No different than Biden sleeping on a beach 
on a Monday morning, right? I mean, sun sunbathing on a beach on a Monday morning, you know, wrong time. And of course, you know, Walls has to restore his reputation, you know, to, to the male voter. I mean, this is a guy who literally was putting tampons in male's bathrooms in Minnesota. I mean, you know, there, I, don't, I don't think there's many, you know, masculine men that, that exactly find that to be a, you know, a, a positive attribute. I mean, this is a guy who took his honeymoon to China. It's shocking that no one talks about that. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out with Tim Walls how a guy... You know, who, who was on a teacher salary, was able to go over to China 35 times. Listen, I've been in international business my entire life. I, I, I know a lot of those guys. No, who's been over to China mm -hmm. 35 times? Who pays for, for those trips? Who mm -hmm. takes their money? Who takes their honeymoon to communist China? And so, you know, I, I don't think you can restore your reputation by, you know, kind of haphazardly going in a mm -hmm. field and pretending, you know, pretending you're a great hunter. I mean, first of all, you're going to look insincere. Second of all, you're going to kind of look foolish because if you don't do it all the time, you can, you know, see it from a mile away. But, but man, I mean, I, it, I think it's going to take a lot of work, and I, don't, I, I certainly don't think he can get there. Did you see what Obama said? He went to this campaign field office before he, he went to this rally, and he said, it's not the same kind of energy as we saw when I was running. He's worried about the black male vote. Because everything's gone downhill. Ainsley, there, there isn't a single person who's watching us right now Go, go try and get auto insurance. Look at mortgage rates. You're getting 8% mortgage rates right now when under my father it was 2.5%, right? I mean, look at the price of food. Look at gas is up three times. Utilities, the cost of an iPhone, the cost of your cell bill, the cost of your, your cable, the cost of rent in this country. No one thinks this world is doing better. No one thinks America is doing better. Our, our allies are being attacked. We're sending money overseas like drunken sailors. $200 billion to Ukraine? And FEMA runs out of money? FEMA, yeah. the last hurricane, we put $334 million into that hurricane. Mayorkas comes out and says he's out of money. And yet we sent $200 billion over to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. understand we're not putting America first. We're putting America dead last. And, and, and it's just a sign of weakness. And, and my father is, will reverse that. My father will put this country first. And we're going to win on the economy. And we're going to win on the military. And we're going to win on absolutely everything. And... He's, he's going to make America great again. Thank you, Eric. Great talking to you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.